you what's up here cmc army and money makers welcome back to the channel first and foremost uh, i wish you a very happy healthy and prosperous new year as we begin 2022 there is some excitement going on i really wanted to thank you for all of your support in 2021 in the growth of this channel clicking that like button subscribing to the channel and supporting this channel all year long we are going to do even better in 2022 because of some of the opportunities that are coming up many of you are waiting to hear what's next for HCMC. So here in this particular video, I'll be covering HCMC, Healthier Choices Management, one of the buzz stock in 2021, one of the exciting stuff that was going on in HCMC. We went from one level to three levels. What exactly is happening with HCMC? I'll be covering all that great details, what brought this stock up from one to three, whether it can go to all the way to 0 0.0010, which is the rights offering price, what we should think about its CMC when we are heading into 2022, what a company that has three million more or less dollar worth of revenue every quarter brings us as the investment opportunity. I'm back with all that kind of juicy, juicy, interesting and very much uh, uh, revenue oriented information in this particular video. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and make sure that you spread the word out. As a community, we're staying pretty strong. Now, what you want to consider, whether this was short volume, not really. What, whether that was volume that brought this price up to the three levels, yes, 100%. We'll take a look into the chart. Take a look at the short volume, 29.13. So that, uh, that short volume, volume is not going up. We have seen for HCMC in 60s, in 50s, the short volume. Right now, when we had 3.5 billion worth of volume, our short volume was 1 billion only. So short sellers are not playing the game for HCMC at the moment. If you remember the year end letter from their CEO, what they mentioned is they're focusing on three opportunities. They will grow their revenue base throughout the larger footprint in the brick and mortar, as well as online. That's number one. They want to expand their IP product property suite as well. And third one is they want to improve on their profitability. Now, why this is important? If you take a look once again on this chart that you see that in September, 2021, so that's Q3, they booked $3.27 million in revenue. They were again in June, 3.39, March, 3.47, and last December, 3.23. But what is most important is their net income is still negative, $911,000 negative. Their net income in March, 600 and almost 700,000 negative. In June, they were negative, uh, they were positive actually, $180,000. So negligible positive uh, net cash income. And in net income, they were negative a million dollars. That has to do with some of the loss that is going on, the EBITDA, their operational overheads that is going Going on so on and so forth but what the company is trying to do is they are excited to grow their segment of health and wellness centers into the healthier choices wellness center brand and they believe that this segment will do a ton better not only that you also want to remember that they are uh, ex exploring potential ways to modify the capital share structure in a way that will be more favorable to their shareholders now i do not have obviously more details as to how they're going to accomplish this and what they're exactly going to do but one thing you want to remember is this company is almost a hundred million dollar company as you see so their market cap is 100 million dollars and if you take a look at their cash and cash equivalent it's 28.1 million as of quarter ended December, september 30th 2021 what that means is the company has almost 28 percent of total cash total value in cash cash on hand compared to their market cap, which is a huge amount of cash in my personal opinion. They are also exploring the options, how they can work out their share structure to help support their uh, help support their shareholders as well, which is once again a great thing. Their CEO has been always thinking about the share shareholders. They have multiple times spoke out. This is one of the very popular stock. This is, this is the stock that has a strong, strong community. If you take a look once again on the stock weights, we are taking, we are looking at 85,000 plus of watchers on stock weights and there is a ton of momentum going on right here as well if you take a look once again into the message volume every single time message volume goes up we see the price the stock price goes up take a look right here we are 50 percent plus into the stock price where message volume went up two percent we are nowhere closer to what 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 we were 
in December, in mid-December-ish, when we heard the news about the lawsuit. Now, if you are still thinking about what's go what's next for HCMC, I just wanted to quickly share with you that HCMC has two different uh, avenues in terms of the one of the biggest catalysts. You want to focus on the biggest catalyst, not only the biggest catalyst, because the company also has intrinsic value. And this particular comment, I 100% agree with. So I wanted to share with you, the company still ho is holding its intrinsic value. What that means is the company still has the revenue, the $3 million revenue year over year, quarter over quarter rather, which accounts for 12 to $13 million in revenue every year. If the company does well, they are going to grow their footprint, profitability, operational overheads, they're going to reduce and they're going to work on exploring options for the shareholders, which is a win-win situation, which is a positive, even though there are a lot of sell-offs and tax harvesting occurring. One of the things that you also want to notice is maybe this is just coincidence when the news arrived about this lawsuit update as well as the PTAP IPR interpart as review update but there is a ton of tax harvesting happening people sell and buy based on their portfolio and based on based on the way they want to take the, the, the losses for capital gains so on and so forth for the tax purposes which tells me there are a lot of still longs in now if you remember HCMC had more than 400,000 shareholders and in my opinion, the shareholders are still staying strong. I do not have the latest data, but in around in mid 2021, we found out that they have more than 400,000 shareholders when they offered rights uh, for their common shareholders, probably hoping for an appeal that I'm guessing. Now, what's going to happen is right here, I wanted to show this two forks or two catalysts. One of the bigger catalysts is the lawsuit that the judge advised. So they started this lawsuit, they, they filed the lawsuit against Philip Morris, for the patent infringement for the product IQOS that Philip Morris has. So that was in November 2020. They had this, uh, they did not really have a great success and the judge advised to close the case. Now what happens next? They filed the appeal in December 2021, which is right here. Now this particular appeal was December 14th, 2021 at CMC announced the filing of appeal. So they wanted to go to the higher authority for the ruling in the case against Philip Morris. What it means is right now they announced that they have filed an appeal of the district court for the Northern District of Georgia, dismissal of HCMC's patent infringement action against Philip Morris USA, Philip Morris Products Asa HCMC believes that Georgia court committed legal error by dismissing its complaint for the patent infringement also by denying HCMC's motion to amend its pleading. What was happening at that point is they were not, they did the, the, the case, the lawsuit did not really go into the discovery phase or the trial phase. The HCMC and Philip Morris were looking into the case and Philip Morris filed an application or motion to dismiss which judge was going to decide and discuss so on and so forth. And they decided that there is no merits in the case. What HCMC is saying is the court committed legal error by dismissing its complaint. The CEO said, we'll continue vigorously to pursue your case throughout the appellate process as we believe that the facts and controlling law support in our position. So they are going next into the next phase. Now that's one. We do not know really the timeline, which is where it's becoming more challenging because many people will not have enough patience and there will be a ton of uh, fud going on with fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Now this is a long term game. If you are thinking that it's going to happen in one month, two months, three months, probably it's not going to happen. Patience is the key because lawsuit, especially the patent infringement lawsuits tend to take longer. Now, if you think about this particular price point from one to three, many people triple their money who bought the stock at one level. Right now we are at three level. As you see, just in one day, it spiked up 50%. Now, many people are holding strong because they bought the stock at higher levels. In my opinion, if you bought that in the rights offering, you bought it at 0 0.0010. So the stock cut down in 66 and a half percent, more or less. So you're trying to figure out what to do. What I'm not a financial advisor, nor I'm a certified professional. But by the way, click that like button, subscribe to the channel. That'll be super helpful. What I try to do is I share the research analysis and review that I do and share that with you so you can make informed financial decision. Now, the, for the stock to grow and go up to 0 0.0010, one of the catalysts, one of the announcement, one of the news could be enough and there will be massive volume. One thing that you want to notice in HCMC is the volume. Volume is the key. Remember what happened. We were in half a billion in volume, 662 
million shares were traded on December 29th. We went to 1.3, 1.4 billion in volume on December 30th, which is once again, double the volume. Right now we tripled it up. So 13 times three is uh, uh, 3.9 million. So we're almost, almost, almost triple the volume. So if you think about from this price at uh, this point, December 29th to December 31st, we have 5x volume, almost 5x volume, which drove the stock into the very positive direction. By the way, you also want to notice that this volume was all buying volume. Take a look right here, this big, big chart, big, big juicy green line. We have been seeing so much buying volume lately. If I, if I scroll this uh, chart back to five days, you should be able to see that we started seeing this uh, green sticks very, very frequently in terms of the buying volume. If I go to one day, you would be able to see even clearer that we saw the buying volume right here, but around the end time, we, are, we also saw the buying volume. By the way, the RSI is 58 in my opinion, great RSI after 3.6, 3.7 billion in volume. It's all buying volume in my opinion because we did not really see the short volume because short volume ratio was 229.13 when we had 3.5 billion of volume we had only short volume of 1 billion so you want to consider that by the way going back to this particular catalyst we do not really have the timeline we do not really know exactly when it's going to happen but the appellate court is going to decide what are the next steps now now here is the thing if appellate court decides that there is a legit married case by filed by HCMC for this infringement against Philip Morris, that means the stock may see a really, really good spike because it creates a ton of momentum, possibility of winning, possibility of getting into the settlement, so on and so forth, a ton of different uh, catalysts there that will arise at that point. So that's our final outcome in terms, what's the final outcome, we don't know, but that's the intermediate catalyst that I'm thinking for myself. The second one is the PTAB Interparties Review application that they filed in June 2021. Flip Morris had filed PTAB Interparties Review application against HCMC's 170 patent in June 2021. The review has been instituted and here is the order. On December 17, 2021, we found that United States Patent and Trademark Office before the patent trial and appeal board, they had their decision and I just don't really want to go into too much detail. You can watch my previous video but here is the final order that I want to put in front of you if you missed my previous video. It is in consideration of the foregoing, it is hereby ordered that the interparties review of all challenge claim of the patent 170, so this is the patent that HCMC has, is instituted with respect to all grounds set forth in the petition. Now, we will see what happens. So basically, it may take up to one year and there is a six months extension period as well. So we are looking at one year, one, one and a half year, so on and so forth. We'll see how that works out. But here exactly how it works. It'll take probably one year. So we're looking into December 2022. So one year from now, December 2022, because this review was instituted, in December 2021. That's my understanding. I'm not a lawyer. By the way, there is six, month, six months extension as well as you see right here. So if there is a need, they'll give six months extension for this particular interparties review. So that's where we are sitting at the moment. So we do not really have timeline. We have a strong community. There are more than 400,000 uh, shareholders at the moment. We do not have the real numbers or the real time numbers, but that's what my understanding is at the moment. So you want to consider that part as well. Now, what it means in terms of HCMC. Once again, I want to go back to the cash and cash equivalent. They have three to four million dollars somewhere quarter or quarter in terms of revenue. They have 28.1 million cash and cash equivalents. They have current other assets, 2.3 million that puts them current asset with 30.5 million at the end of September 30th. So last quarter 2021, I'm super interested in learning about what they did in Q4, what is the profitability, what did they do in terms of the operational cost. Remember, they have the lawsuit expense as well. How that works out, we'll figure it out. They have other assets, 6.1 million. With that, they have total asset of 36. 6 million for a company that is 100 million dollar in market cap more or less so they have more than one third cash and cash equivalent and or total asset their asset used to be 11.8 million now if you ask me where this current cash came from that came from the rights offering that the company has and that's why i'm super excited because company can put that cash 
to work for themselves they are doing that more or less remember they hire they have acquired or the acquisition was done for eir hydration and iv therapy center they also did the tie up with oh, by the way before that they also had the bulb technology vaping cartridge that they announced the patent so they're growing their ip in intellectual property portfolio as well they had the partnership with six pack solution it seems is cucup can technology that they want to expand in canada they started the tie up with nuhi brand for the pu uh, pre-fill Q-Cup technology that they have, proprietary patent technology they want to grow in Colorado within the health center. So they want to do more and more. They also want to focus a ton more onto their online uh, vitamin shop. Basically, that will reduce their overheads. I'm not sure how they're doing in terms of the online um, a module or online revenue channels will be able to figure out when they close the quarter in Q4, December 31st. We're waiting to hear back from the company around their financial. It may take a few more weeks before we can find it, find it out. I'll be sure to share that information with you. So I'm looking for, for those things. I'm also looking for, for the community, how strong we stay together because volume is the key every single time we have seen higher volume we have seen the stock spiked up yes it's a different story when we heard about the lawsuit there was a lot of short volume but in this time period whatever we saw in last couple of days when the volume spiked up i truly saw the volume with the green candle many many times now take a look right here what's happening with its cmc our, our volume stayed strong a lot of people are sticking to its cmc their watchers on stock weights if you take a look at the volume short volume we did not really see see volume higher than 25 points or uh, 25 point index a short volume ratio with higher higher index like 60 50s 40s we did not really see that much take a look 33 24 34 23 57 so on and so forth and we ended with 30 almost 30 we ended the year with almost 30 so i wanted to share this information with you uh, now i'm not personally for me once again i'm not a financial advisor i'm not buying new stocks uh, by 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 any means but I'm not really worried about the stock if I own or if I want to sell. I'm not really looking into the stock price because ha whatever happens, happens. Now, you want to write it for free at one point. And if you want to find out how that works, you can join my Patreon. You can help support the channel. You can subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you join the Patreon, it costs you $4.99, but we have private Discord and we can talk a ton how you can write for free. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.